Are you tired of using the same boring AI voice models? Do, Do you, you wish you could perfectly clone anyone's voice with just a few audio clips on your computer? Well, now you can. And today, I'm gonna show you how. Hello humans, my name is K, your air overload and, and oh boy, this video is gonna be insane. Because today, I'm gonna teach you how to perfectly clone anyone's voice for free on your local computer. Imagine having Morgan Freeman reading you a bedtime story as you're falling asleep. Or having Gordon Ramsay yell the insults as you're cooking dinner. Or listening to Spongebob cracking a few jokes. Or even listen to your own sultry voice, if you are into that sort of thing. The possibilities are endless. Alright, alright, back to myself again. And to be able to do this, we're gonna be using an amazing cool piece of tech called RVC, which is an amazing open source program that allows you to clone a voice and convert an audio file into that new voice. And it's absolutely glorious. You're gonna love it. So that being said, let's begin. And to install RVC, you have two ways. The first is of course by using the one-click installer that is available for my Patreon supporters. Just download the installer onto your computer, then double-click on the file, and wait for everything to be installed. And a few minutes later, RVC is ready to be used. Simple as that. You don't have to do anything. Now you can also download the RVC package installer that will basically download an older version of RVC, which looks very similar to the older version, but it's just a little bit older and you won't be able to automatically update it whenever you want. So definitely, if you can, use the normal RVC audio cloning installer instead. And the second way that you can install RVC is of course the manual installation. And I'm gonna show you how. Now, First of all, if you want to use the older RVC package, it's actually very easy. All you have to do is just click the link in the description down below. You're gonna arrive on this page. Then under releases, you're gonna click on this little link and then choose the package for your GPU that is then gonna be downloaded onto your computer. So then next, you're gonna extract the archive. Then you're gonna go inside that folder. Then you're gonna launch goweb.bat file, which will then launch the package version of RVC. Now, as I said, this version works, but it is a version from a few months ago. So you're not gonna have all the bells and whistles of the newest version. And also you won't be able to update it whenever there is a cool new update. So instead, if you can, you should definitely do the proper normal installation. And here's how to do it. So first, make sure that you have Python and Git for Windows installed. Then you're gonna create a new folder onto your computer and you can name it anything you want. Then you're gonna click on the folder path, type cmd, press enter, which will then bring the command prompt window. Then once you're on the GitHub page, you're gonna click on code, then click on this little icon right here. And then in the command prompt window, you're gonna type git, clone, and then copy and paste the link that you just copied, and then press enter, which will then clone the repository onto your computer. So then next, you're gonna go inside that folder. So you're gonna type cd, then copy and paste the name of the folder, then press enter. So then next, once we are inside, we need to determine what is our PyTorch CUDA version. And for this, you're gonna copy and paste this command line that you will find in the description down below, then press enter, and you will see here a CUDA PyTorch version. So in my case, it is a 2.1.2 plus CU118. And the important number right here is the CU118. And we need this version for later. So then next, you're gonna create a new Python environment. So you're gonna type Python MVNV ENV, then press enter. Then we're gonna activate the environment with this command line. So then next, you're gonna copy and paste this command line that you'll find in the description down below. But be careful because at the end, as you can see right here, you need to put the right CU version that we printed previously. So in my case, it is CU118. So I did put CU118. But if you add a different version, let's say that you add CU117 instead, here you'll have to change the CU118 to CU117. But in my case, since I have the CU118, I'm gonna leave it like that and then press enter. So then next you're gonna install the requirements with the following command, then press enter. So once this is done, I saw a few people have an error that says that the numpy module is missing, even though it was installed correctly. And I had the same issue also. And to solve this problem, what I found out is to first uninstall numpy with the command pip uninstall numpy, then press enter. Then type Y, press enter again, and then we're gonna reinstall NumPy again, but this time with the 1.23.5 version, and then press enter again. And now this should work correctly. So next we need to download the models, so just type this command, python tools slash download models .py, then press enter, which will automatically download all the models that it needs to run. And once all the models are downloaded, we can actually close the common prompt window. We don't need it anymore. So then next, you're gonna click the description down below. You're gonna arrive on the second phase repository, then click on files and versions, then scroll
scroll down until you see ffmpeg.exe and ffprop.exe and then you're gonna download these two files onto your computer. And once you have them, you're gonna select them, Control X to cut them, and then you're gonna place them inside the main folder. And then finally, you're gonna click the next link, you're gonna arrive on my Hugging Face repository, and you're gonna download these four launching files right here. So just click on this button right here, and just like the other files, you're gonna select them, cut them, and paste them inside this folder. And if it asks you if you want to replace the files in the destination, you're gonna say yes. And then finally, once this is done, you're gonna launch the goweb.bat file, which will automatically launch the web UI. And now, finally, we can have some fun. And oh boy, there is a lot of fun to be had. So before we begin, I kinda need to explain to you what RVC really is, because there is still a lot of people that might be a little confused. Now yes, RVC is a web UI that allows you to train your own voice, or any voice that you want, into a voice model, and then use that voice model to create new sounds. However, RVC is not text-to-speech. This is not a software that allows you to just input text, and get the text read in your own voice. No, 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 no. RVC only does audio to audio, meaning that you need an audio file as a base to convert it into a new audio file. You can just input text and get the text read with the cloned voice. However, do not worry, I will actually show you how to do that at the end of the video. I will show you how to actually use text-to-speech with the clone model, without installing anything new. Or at least if you have watched my previous videos. Alright, so let's not waste any more time, and let's start cloning a new voice. And it is actually surprisingly easy to do. So for this, you're gonna click on the third tab that says Train, and then here you will see a bunch of options. I know that this sounds really really scary, but believe me when I say that this is actually really really simple to use. Now before we can actually start training a voice, well, um, we need a voice. So how do we do that? And most importantly, how long is the audio needs to be to get a good cloning? Well, if you actually go on the GitHub repository of RVC, you see right here that it basically says that you can train any voice with around 10 minutes of audio. And this is exactly what I recommend you to get. You really need at least 10 minutes of good audio voice to train a good model. Now I understand that depending on who you're trying to train, this might be more or less difficult, but let me just reassure you that the most important part is not really the duration, but more the quality of the dataset, as always. So for this, you really need a good clean voice that doesn't have any background noise, that is easy to understand, and if you can get at least 10 minutes of recording, the final results is gonna be great. Okay, so then how do we actually do this? So I mean, once again, it really depends on who you're training. If you are training on your own voice, well, once again, it is really, really simple. Just use a software like Audacity and a good mic to record the audio of you talking for around 10 minutes or more. And once you have the audio, well, you're ready to train. However, if you're training someone else, well, in that case, there might be a little bit more work for you to do. Now, let's say that, for example, you want to train like the voice of Joe Biden, for example. Well, the best way to do this is to actually download interview videos of Joe Biden talking the entire time. Now, if you don't know how to download YouTube videos as a WAV format, you can actually search on Google websites that will do that. Unfortunately, I can't really show them on YouTube because otherwise YouTube might strike my channel because it is against terms of service. But if you Google YouTube WAV, you should be able to find a website that does that. And once you have the WAV file, you can once again use a software like Audacity, just drag and drop the audio into Audacity like this, and then what you need to do is to actually isolate only the voice of the person that you want to clone. So like for example, if you actually listen to the interview, Mr. President, it's great to see you again. Thank you Good for to doing see you. this. You see that not only we hear the journalist, but also Joe Biden talking at the same time. And obviously we don't want that in our final audio. So basically what we need is to listen to the entire audio, pick up when the person that we want to clone is talking, and delete the rest. And yes, I know this is gonna be extremely long and extremely annoying, but this is really the best and only way to do this. Now one thing that you can also do, that can definitely improve the range of the voice, is to find videos of like monologue, when the person is talking without getting interrupted, so that in the end you get a clean and varied dataset. Now in this video I'm not gonna do that because I've already done so with my own voice. I actually prepared three voice files of myself talking, and I put all of that inside a folder. And the total length of these voices is actually 18 minutes. 
but this is more than enough to clone a good voice. Okay, so basically once you have done it like me, and you have like multiple files of the voice of the person that you want to clone, you're gonna put that inside the folder, then you're gonna go back to the web UI, into the train tab, and we can start filling all of this information before we start training. So first we're gonna enter the name for our new voice clone. So here, in my case, I will simply input my voice, but you can of course put anything you want. For the target sample rate, I will actually choose the 48,000, because this is the rate at which my voice was recorded, you can actually vary find the project rate inside Audacity right here, and then here you're gonna leave everything else by default, except maybe the number of CPU processes, so if you have a weak CPU you might want to decrease that value, but otherwise 16 is more than enough, it doesn't really matter, so then we're gonna go to the next step, where here you're gonna input the path of the training folder, so in my case it is right here, so I'm gonna copy paste it right here, leave this as zero because we only have one speaker, and then click process data, and there you go, success. So depending on the number of voice files, it might take a few minutes to process. So the next, if you have only one GPU, you should leave everything by default. But if you have like a multi-GPU system, you will need to enter the GPU index separated by a dash. So if you have like two GPU, for example, it should be written 0 and 1. So for this, you need to enter 0 dash 1. It will use both GPU to do the training. But in my case, since I only have one GPU, and you probably also have one GPU, and you should leave 0 by default. So the next, select the pitch extraction algorithm. You definitely need to use the RPMVE GPU version. It is by far the best algorithm, so basically leave everything by default, and then click feature extraction. And then after a few minutes, you should see like this huge wall of text that will basically say all feature done. That's when you know that you can go to the next step. So then finally, for the next and final step, we need to choose the right training settings. Okay, so here's what I recommend you to do. For the total training epochs, what I personally use is around 250. Now this is already a lot of training. You don't necessarily need to go this high. You can actually start very very low at something like maybe 100, and then if you don't like the results, you can just continue the training. But if you're just like me and you prefer to just set it and forget it, and do something else while it trains, I do like using 250 for the training epochs. Now for the save frequency, I basically save for every 50 epochs, so in the end I should have like 5 different models to choose from, and by choosing these options, you can't really fail a training, because 250 is already more than enough training for a simple voice, and by saving every 50 epochs, you have 5 different models to choose from, so that you can choose which one you prefer the best. So the next, the batch size per GPU, is basically just like how fast the training will be. So if you are like me and you have a 24GB of VRAM, you will basically crank this up to extreme at 40, but keep in mind that the higher the value, the more VRAM it's gonna use to do the training. So if you see that you have like a CUDA out of memory, you should definitely decrease that number to something like maybe 10, and start from there. If you still have a CUDA out of memory error, once again start reducing the number, and then start again. This number really depends on the amount of GPU RAM that you have, and the amount of applications that are running in the background. So this number will be different for everyone. But in my case, since I have a 24GB GPU, I will put it at 40 max. So the next, save only the latest CKPT file to save this space. You can use this option if you really want to, but I'm personally not gonna use the CKPT file anyway, so I'm not gonna use it. So the next, cache all training sets to GPU memory. So this option should only be used if you have less than 10 minutes of audio, but otherwise you should leave no by default. And then finally, save a small final model to the weights folder at each save point. I'm gonna say yes. This way for every epoch, we can see to determine which model is the best. And so, once everything is selected, you're gonna leave these by default, you can simply click on one click training to start the training. And after a few minutes, the training will start. And in my case, to train like a 20 minute voice for 250 epochs, it takes around one hour, one hour and a half of training. Now, I'm not gonna do it because I've already done it before. And now if you actually go to assets and then weights, you should see here a myvoice.pth file that basically represents your voice model. And then if you go back and you go to logs, you will see here a new folder called my voice and if you go inside you'll see basically a bunch of files that you need if you want to continue the training so now that we have our model trained we can finally have some fun and convert any audio into my own voice 
And for this, you can actually go to the first tab that says Model Inference. Then you're going to click on this little button that says Refresh Voice List in Index Path. Then under Inference in Voice, you're going to select My Voice.pth or whatever the name that you previously chose. So the next, your goal is to choose the right transpose value. And transpose is basically like the right octave that you need to choose. So if you're trying to convert a male voice to a female voice, you need to raise that value to something like 12. But if you are converting a female voice to a male voice, you need to decrease that value to something like minus 12. Now, it's not a problem if you don't know exactly what value you need to input. You can actually just play with this value and see what works, because it all depends on the source of the audio. But since the conversion is actually really, really fast, this is really not a problem. Basically, first just start with zero and see what works for you. So the next, we need to enter the path of the audio file that we need to process. And for this, you need, of course, a base file that you need to convert into the cloned voice. So like for this test, I chose to film like this. Be careful because it is extremely funny, so be prepared to laugh. The Fetness Gram Pacer test is a multi-stage aerobic capacity test that progressively gets more difficult as it continues. So there you go, absolutely peak meme, nothing funnier than that. So basically here I'm gonna right click on the file and select copy as path, then control V to paste the path right here. Here you actually don't need to input anything because right here it should automatically choose the right index corresponds to the inference voice that you chose right here. So the next for the pitch extraction algorithm, once again, you're gonna leave it by default. Our MVPE is the best. So then here you have like a bunch of values that you can adjust if you want. Now, to be honest, I played a lot with these values and I very rarely see some difference. So to be honest, you should just leave them by default. And then once this is done, simply click on convert and wait for everything to be converted. And actually this is really really fast because it takes only a few seconds for the audio to be converted. Okay, so now let's listen to the results. The Fatness Gram Pacer test is a multi-stage aerobic capacity test that progressively gets more difficult as it continues. And yeah, there you go, this is my voice. Now as you heard right here, it sounds a little too low, not in volume, but like the octave. So we should probably increase that level a little bit because the person in the audio has a deeper voice than mine. So if I put something like 5 for example, and then I try again, now let's check out the difference. The Fatness Gram Pacer test is a multi-stage aerobic capacity test that progressively gets more difficult as it continues. Oh yeah, this is definitely much better. This is really, really close to my own voice. Now, of course, depending on your voice, on the voice that you trained, you should definitely try to, you know, play a little bit with the values. And of course, the bigger the difference between the bass voice and your own voice, the bigger difference there will be in the final audio. So things like accents and language, might make the difference much, much bigger. So it is always better to have a voice that is closer to you whenever you try to convert it. But I think that for me, it is really, really good. And once I like the results, for example, and I want to download it, you can just click on this little icon right here and then click on download. And now you can use this audio whenever you want. But guess what? This is not the end of the fun. Because yes, we just cloned the voice. We spent like a lot of time preparing the voices, preparing the audio, doing the cloning, but what if you don't really want to do that? Well, actually, depending on who you want to train, you might not have to do anything. And the reason is because the RVC community is huge. And it is a software that is extremely popular. Meaning that there is also a lot of models made by the community that you can download and use directly without training. And to find those models, the website that I recommend is voicemodels.com, where you can basically search a bunch of voice models that were already trained by the community and that you can download in one single click. Now here, for example, you can search for any model that you want. Just search the name of the character or you can just go to the top and download the model that you want to use. So let's say, for example, that I want SpongeBob. I can simply click on this link right here to download the archive onto my computer. So once you have the archive, you can just extract it, which usually will give you two files, a PTH file and an index file. Now, both of these files needs to go to their special folder. For the PTH file, you need to select it, Control X to cut it. Then you're gonna go inside Assets, Waves, and then paste the file right here. And for the index file, you're gonna select it, Control X to cut it, then go inside Logs, and then paste that file right here. So then back in the web UI, you're gonna click on this button again to refresh the voice list. Then you're gonna select the SpongeBob one, probably increase the octave because SpongeBob has a very, very high voice. 
Here you should automatically detect the index path, but if for some reason it doesn't, you need to select it manually. And then once everything is done, you can simply click convert. And now let's listen to the results. The fitness gram pacer test is a multi-stage aerobic capacity test that progressively gets more difficult as it continues. And yeah, there you go. And there are literally tens of thousands of models for you to choose from. And if for some reason you can't find the model that you want, you can simply use Google and search it like this. Just input RVC followed by the name of the person that you want. And very often, on something like Hugging Face, you'll find an amazing model for you to use. And all you need is the PTH file as well as the index file. Nothing else. Okay, so to finish this video, let's talk about text-to-speech and roleplay. Because yes, as I said previously, RVC is an audio-to-audio -audio software. You can't just use text-to-speech, you can't just input a text and have the clone voice read the text to you. You need to first have an audio to convert. But how do we get this audio if you want to use text-to-speech? Well, there is plenty of ways to do this, but if you've been following my channel for a while, you should actually already have everything you need to do it. Because for this, we can actually use the UboBuga Tech Generation Web UI to generate the initial audio. Because if you watched my previous videos on the subject, I actually showed you how to clone an AI voice inside the Tech Generation Web UI with only 10 seconds of audio using the Koki extension. And this is what we're actually gonna use. Now, once again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you haven't seen this video, I highly recommend that you watch it, because otherwise you might be a little lost. But basically what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use the Koki TTS extension to generate an audio file that we can then use to convert inside the RVC web UI. And for this it's very simple, just go inside the session tab, activate the Koki TTS, if you have already installed the extension before, then click apply, wait for everything to load, then you're gonna go to model, select a model, and then load it, then go back to chat, scroll down, make sure the cookie TTS is activated, that it plays the TTS automatically, then check show message text under audio player, make sure that you have a few voice waves available, even a basic one is fine, in my case I have this Barack Obama voice, and then we can finally start generating the text. But you might be asking, okay, but how do we actually do this? This is supposed to be like a conversation. This is supposed to be a chat. So how do we actually go from like a full text to a voice file inside the text generation web UI? Now to do this is actually really simple. All we need to do is basically make sure that the first message is the message that we want to read. And to do this is actually very simple. You can just go to parameters, then in character, and then under greetings, that is actually the first message that the AI is gonna say when you create a new chat. Here you're gonna actually put the message that you want the AI to read. And now if we go back to chat and we create a new chat. The Fitnessgram Pacer Test is a multi-stage aerobic capacity test that progressively gets more difficult as it continues. Students begin at the starting line. Once the test begins, the running speed starts slowly, but gets faster each minute after you hear the signal. The AI will basically say the greeting message, but since the Activate TTS is activated, whenever you create a new chat, it will automatically transform the first message into an audio file. Simple as that. And you can of course do this with any message that you want. And once we have that, you can actually just click on this little icon, click download, and now we have our base audio. We have our base audio file that we can use inside RVC. So once again, just choose the voice that you want to use. If I select mine, for example, since in my case, my voice is a little bit higher than Barack Obama, I'm going to input a value of something like 8. Then I'm going to input the path of the audio file. Then I'm going to leave everything else by default and then click convert. And after a few seconds, we can finally listen to the results. The Fitnessgram Pacer Test is a multi-stage aerobic capacity test that progressively gets more difficult as it continues. Students begin at the starting line. Once the test begins, the running speed starts slowly, but gets faster each minute after you hear the signal. And yeah, there you go. So although this audio is not exactly perfect, I would suggest trying to redo the generation again and again inside the Tech Gen Web UI to get like a more, a more natural sounding audio. Once you get a good bass audio, the rest is really super easy. Now for those of you asking if you can use RVC inside City Tavern for roleplay, the answer is yes but you shouldn't use it. And the reason why is because, once again, since RVC is an audio to audio, you need to first generate an audio using the normal text-to-speech that will then be used with RVC to convert to the voice that you want. And not only this is extremely slow, the final result is usually not very good. Which is why that if you want to use text-to-speech inside Silly Tavern, 
you should definitely use XTTS instead. And if you don't know how to use it, or if you don't know what Silly Tavern even is, you should definitely watch my previous video on the subject. The link for it will be in the description down below. Or just simply use the one click installer if you are one of my Patreon supporters. Oh, and speaking of Patreon, do not forget that I provide priority support on Patreon, so if you have any issues whatsoever, just send me a DM, and I will try to answer your question as soon as possible. So yeah, there you go, this was RVC. Not only now you can clone any voice that you want, and do the training yourself, but now you also know how to have access to thousands of different models trained by the community, and use that to convert any audio that you want, into the cloned AI voice, and all of that locally on your own computer. So if you haven't already, definitely try this out yourself and have some fun. And there we have it folks, thank you guys so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos, you guys are absolutely awesome, you people are literally the reason why I'm able to make these videos, so thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time, bye bye!